Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is an asteroid on the way to impact with our planet Earth. In today's video we're going to investigate five of the largest craters on our planet Earth that were created by various collisions with asteroids that came from outer space, and we're going to also find out where they're located, how big they are, and what may have actually resulted in their collision. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> Now, as you can see, the asteroid I just collided created quite a lot of different destruction. This was actually a very large asteroid, it was about 30 kilometers in diameter, and it even caused our planet to slightly evaporate. But it's pretty fair to say that the asteroids I'll be talking about never created this much destruction. As a matter of fact, um, they may have been partially responsible for the extinction events, but they weren't large enough to cause any kind of a serious major destruction of everything on our planet Earth. I'm going to show you all five of them and we're going to kind of estimate their size in comparison to our planet Earth by placing them in orbit around uh, the planet. And so all five of them are orbiting around our planet Earth. I'm going to zoom in just to show you how tiny they actually are. This is the uh, so-called Redford asteroid, the Redford impactor, that created the largest crater on our planet. It's about 300 diameters, uh, 300 kilometers in diameter, and it's basically one of the most energetic events that has happened in the last few billion years. But this particular asteroid is actually not very large. It's only about seven kilometers in radius, or approximately 14 to 15 kilometers in diameter. In comparison to something that you may be more familiar with, like for example the moon, this is what the size of this asteroid actually is. We're going to go into the charts here and I'm going to show you what all of this looks like by going past the moon. So this is the moon, this is Earth and there are those impactors. That's how tiny they are. They're very, 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 very small. All five of them are relatively similar in size and all five of them caused the largest craters on our planet that are actually relatively large. So this one was about 300 kilometers, this one was about 250, 180, 100 and 100 uh, kilometers in diameter. Uh, this would be an equivalent of a relatively large crater on the moon, uh, specifically the crater that you can easily see with, uh, with your naked eye by looking at the moon. So like uh, 300 kilometers would be about this much, uh, so if I were to place an, an object that's very similar in size, like for example... So this object right here, Ceres, is about uh, 500 kilometers in radius, so it's about half the size of Ceres. So this is how large the actual uh, crater is from the largest of these impact objects. And they're, as you can see, very, very, very tiny. So let's talk actually a little bit more about each of them, where they're located, or I guess where you can actually find them, and specifically um, when they happened, and uh, any other features and sort of effects that they may, they may have caused. And the first one is the one that's closest to our planet orbiting right there, and this is actually called the Redford um, Impact. This is in South Africa. It's, as a matter of fact, let me just, I'm going to spin this a little bit so you can see South Africa a little bit better. It is in the region right around here. Uh, unfortunately, because it happened something like 2 billion years ago, you can't really see it well anymore. But uh, so approximately 2 billion years ago, uh, this rock that was a approximately 10 to 15 um, kilometers in diameter uh, was moving at a speed of about 17 kilometers per second. And it basically smacked right around here. And we're going to demonstrate this by launching this and changing the param parameters of this as well. And uh, so this uh, asteroid created the largest impact crater we currently have at the diameter of approximately 300 um, kilometers. And so here we go and boom. Now in this game, unless it's a large impact, it's not going to create a very good crater, but it basically did create something. I think a much better simulation here would be if I were to actually launch something like Maybe this Chiricla rock here, that's about uh, 50 kilometers in radius, and this would definitely sort of create a much more spectacular um, explosion than what you just witnessed. So this is once again an impact in South Africa, and you can actually still see it today. If you go to South Africa, you can kind of still see the so-called Redford Dome, um, which is basically something that is still visible um, if you stand sort of on the outskirts of the dome, or if you try to even uh, come to the top of it. And this particular region is also part of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites because of its importance in uh, geology. 
Now, the second largest uh, crater is actually in my home country of Canada, and I'm going to show you approximately where it's located. Although I think our Earth is actually going to be overheating right now, so I need to lower the temperature back to its original value. Um, and it's in, uh, in the province of Ontario, specifically near the city called Sudbury in Ontario. So we're going to go to Canada. And it's somewhere in this region right here. It's kind of hard to see because some of the lakes evaporated, but it's basically a, a relatively large crater uh, with the diameter of about 250 kilometers. And it's kind of hard to see it at first, and I actually only saw it completely by accident once when driving, and I was still young back then, this was after college, and someone noticed um, very unusual mountain formations on the outskirts, and then we explored a little bit more and realized that it's actually a crater that's about 250 kilometers in diameter, that's somewhere in this particular region. So this particular rock was actually even a little bit larger than the previous rock. It was about 16 to uh, 15 to 16 kilometers in uh, in diameter, and this happened a little bit too fast. So let's maybe do it a uh, one more time. So it was somewhere right here. And here we go. So this rock uh, actually collided with our planet about 1.8 billion years ago. So this was a long, long time ago, way, way before dinosaurs. And it created this beautiful crater that is still there today. And if you ever come to Canada, specifically near, near Toronto area, you should definitely take a ride to Sudbury um, Basin and try to find this unusual crater. Now, none of these uh, collisions, even though they were so big, um, were actually responsible for any major extinction events, mostly because there wasn't really that much um, complex life back then. But uh, the next three uh, craters I'm going to talk about were kind of responsible for some of the extinction events. And we're going to start a completely new Earth here, just so I can demonstrate it to you. The first one is actually the most famous one. It's um, in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, which is right here in this region. And this area right here, it's kind of hard to see, but this area right here is about um, 180 kilometer um, wide crater. This crater is known as... Chicxulub crater, and I hope I pronounced this correctly. It's a Mayan word. Um, and here, uh, this particular crater is famous for one thing. 65 million years ago, it collided with our planet Earth. And we're going to demonstrate this right now by launching um, Chicxulub. Uh, oh, that was a little bit too fast, but there we go. That was the Chicxulub crater. And it's actually almost exactly the size, too. Uh, and this essentially, we think, may have accelerated or caused to some extent the extinction of the dinosaurs and it basically is in exactly the same region as you see right here about the same size as this as well maybe a little bit smaller actually because it's only about 180 kilometers in diameter and actually very recently the geologists discovered some really uh, cool and unusual rocks underneath all of this layer of rock uh, specifically uh, rocks that can only be formed in a very sort of highly energetic collision specifically there was a lot of uh, molten quartz a lot of really unusual basaltic rocks that basically uh, indicated that a lot of this uh, ground right here kind of evaporated really quickly and became very deformed uh, within essentially milliseconds so as soon as the um, asteroid hit our planet Earth. And what's interesting, because it actually hit the um, area that had water nearby, it also may have caused some of the largest mega tsunamis in Earth's history that uh, very likely eliminated quite a lot of the coastal life that existed back in the days and possibly caused quite a lot of various uh, climatic, um, climatic changes as well. And for the fourth crater, for the fourth collision, we're going to go to Russia. And uh, Russia actually has quite a lot of craters, but this one specifically is located somewhere right here, I believe. It's um, a region known as Popigai. And this particular region is, well, used to be famous for diamonds. And uh, this used to be also a very secret region because during Stalin era, this is where a lot of the um, concentration camps and a lot of the gulags were located. A lot of free labor was basically collecting these diamonds from this region right here somewhere. And Popigai uh, later became um, known for its diamond production. And guess what? Guess where these diamonds are actually coming from or were coming from? They were coming actually from the actual collision. As a matter of fact, the collision uh, caused so much uh, pressure and so much heat that diamonds were essentially created in that region instantly. And then they were obviously mined by, uh, by the Stalin regime. But uh, until we actually look at this particular region and until we explore it in more detail in 1907, we had no idea that this was actually a very, very, very large crater. And this particular crater um, actually uh, was created about 35 million years ago. So this is one of the more recent large creations. Let's do this again with a little bit more woof. Let's create something a little bit larger. 
And so we're going to try this again. So, uh, yeah, this crater um, is actually one of the recent ones and may have actually caused one of the smaller extinctions known as Eocene Oligocene extinction event that um, caused the uh, extinction of some of the um, water species, some of the marine life. Uh, and it, because it kind of, kind of coincided in, ter in terms of actual collision, uh, or I guess the time coincided with when these species started to be extinct. We don't really know why exactly it was just marine life, but it's possible that some of the ashes here spread into the oceans and maybe poisoned the oceans or something. Uh, so there we go. This is the fourth largest crater. And the fifth largest crater is actually back in Canada as well. And this is a crater known as uh, Manikugan uh, Crater in Quebec, uh, in Canada. And what's interesting is that it's actually one of the few craters you can still kind of see pretty easily if you look at the map of uh, Canada. It's basically a very interesting circle located somewhere right here, surrounded entirely by water. Uh, it's a very large 100 kilometer in diameter sort of circle, and it's clearly basically uh, an impact related shape that is uh, quite easily visible from, uh, from this particular region and also from space or from the air. And uh, even though this uh, particular collision occurred about 250 million years ago, um, we don't really think it caused anything major in terms of extinction or anything. It probably killed a lot of things and it probably destroyed a lot of land, uh, but it didn't really cause any major extinction events. Uh, now, there's actually quite a lot of other really famous craters. There's a bunch of craters in Australia, there's a bunch of cra uh, more craters in um, countries like Sweden, USA, uh, Brazil, and even Norway and Tajikistan have a few craters that are quite large. But but all of these uh, other craters are not as famous as these five and these are actually the five largest craters we uh, currently know of and believe were totally formed by um, very large asteroid collisions. Luckily for us these don't happen very often as a matter of fact the last one was obviously the one in Russia 35 million years ago. And it's likely that uh, these might not happen for a few more million years or at all because we don't really think any more large asteroids are going to actually come close to our planet. But uh, other smaller asteroids uh, collide with our planet Earth all the time. As a matter of fact, a smaller um, asteroid of about 4 meters uh, comes to our planet Earth uh, almost uh, every year. There's uh, Almost every year there's some kind of explosion in the air, which is usually caused by a smaller asteroid or smaller meteorite. Uh, these usually impact in the air, ma making them meteors, and uh, they do create quite large flashes and explosions, but normally it happens over, over sea, so it's kind of hard for us to detect. But we do have special space-based um, uh, satellites that can detect these uh, quite, uh, quite easily. Easily. Uh, larger uh, asteroids, like for example the infamous Tunguska event that happened in Russia and basically destroyed a very, very large area uh, in the forest and may have actually destroyed quite a lot of um, cities if it happened over the urban area. Or the more recent Chilabinsk event that happened a few years ago and that a lot of Russians witnessed that basically caused a lot of destruction there as well. These do happen something like every 60 to every 80 years. Uh, larger impacts are not as common, as a matter of fact, for an asteroid to collide with our planet and to actually cause a, a relatively large crater of at least um, one kilometer in size, we have to wait about 5,000 years. And usually these happen uh, re relatively rarely, so don't expect one for another few thousand years at least. And obviously the larger the rock, the more unlikely it's going to happen, so we don't really have much to worry about, at least in terms of statistics. The closest uh, um, asteroid we had in terms of uh, almost colliding with our planet Earth was the infamous Apophis that came to our planet relatively close a few years back, but it's not going to return for many, 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 many hundreds of years and uh, not going to come close to us again. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to kind of show you where the five um, famous... Uh, collision events occurred. So there's one right there that's going to be in Russia. There's one right here in Mexico, one right here in Canada and another one right here in Canada. And we also have one more right around here in South Africa. These are the five biggest craters on our planet and these are the five biggest uh, collision events that have occurred in the last three or so billion years. In one of the next videos, we might discuss this in a little bit more detail and we might talk about some other interesting collision events, but for now, that is it. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with your friends or someone who enjoys watching these uh, video educational videos using video games, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, bye-bye. Let's maybe 
launch some other objects at our planet and see how it actually deals with a collision from the largest asteroid of them all, Ceres. Well, just as expected. Everyone dead. Everything destroyed. The planet is going to overheat and start smoking any second.